Hi everyone, thank you for checking out my tutorial video. Today I'll be showing you how to create a magic fire staff using the shooter template 2.2b from Invector, like the one I've created for my RPG right here. Robot Commando fires his secret weapon. He takes orders from no one. So I'll be splitting the tutorial into two parts. The first will be creating the staff weapon and the second will be modifying the RPG round to create the fireball effect. Both of these methods can be used to create whatever type of shooting weapon and projectile that you want. Um, now to do this, the staff weapon itself acts pretty much the same as an RPG would. Uh, however, I'm not actually going to use the RPG for the model because of the way the animations lie. It's actually easier to use the uh, assault rifle weapon. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to drag into, actually I'll, I'll first go over, uh, your player model needs to be set up um, with everything that you want on it all ready to go. Um, which means that you want to put on your ragdoll, you want to put on all of the different scripts and everything to create it so you can actually add in all the equipment that it needs um, in order to play it. I'm just going to remove the original fire staff and the rifle ammo that I've got here. Also get rid of that katana because we don't need that. Um, so you'll need the three elements, you'll need the um, melee weapon, shooter and ammo. You don't really need the melee weapon but I mean you're obviously going to want it there anyway, might as well put it in now. And just the uh, standard shooter melee item list data will be all you need for that. Um, the equipment points, I'll go over those uh, shortly once I've actually got the staff created. I'll show you how to put in the equipment points and the new custom handles so that we can actually differentiate between a normal melee weapon um, holding uh, point and the equipment point for the staff itself. Um, so yeah, so go ahead, set up your third person uh, shooter controller and then come in to your assets folder. Uh, have a search for the V assault rifle and there's two versions of it. One of them is just the uh, prefab which is just the rifle by itself and the other one is the prefab which actually has the um, inventory and the shooter weapon script on it. So we want the one with the shooter weapon script. We're going to drag that into our scene. doesn't really matter where you put it for now. Um, just want it so it's nice and balanced. Now I've switched off the 3D gizmo so I can see better here. Uh, as you can see we've got the assault rifle sitting in there. Now uh, the next thing we want to do is we're actually going to grab the model of our weapon. Uh, for this one here I'm using the 3D Mega Item Pack, uh, the wands from that, so I'm just going to type in wand 5, that should give me what I want. So now I've got a whole list here of all the different wands that I've got now. I'm going to use the purple one for this example, so as you can see here. Now I'm going to actually drag the purple wand into the scene by itself. I'm just going to bring it here so it zeroes it out, and as you can see it's sitting at the feet of the warrior. Now in order to get the, the proportions right for this one here, it's actually cool to set it up against the um, the model that you're going to be used that's going to hold it, so you can actually get a feel for the kind of size that you want for it. Now I'm going to take out the X value here so that it's standing upside down like that, and we're going to stretch it out to I believe 5 for this one, and just bring it up so we can see that if it's stood next to him, it sits up a little bit above his head. So if we actually turn that to 180, yeah, that'll do. Bring it back down so that the tip's on the ground. Yeah, we can see that that looks like a pretty cool size. Uh, it does look a little bit thin though, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pull out the X and the Z factor and pop it up to two. So now it looks like it's a yeah, like a thick pole, like a broom handle even. And yeah, the end gets a little bit thicker, so it's cool. And I'm going to reset this back to oops, sorry, negative 90 so that it's facing forward. This just makes it easier for when we're editing it later. I'm also going to reset the position. So reset position, doesn't really matter because we're going to be moving it. Now what I'm going to do is, I've got the assault rifle, I'm just going to bring it down so it's at the bottom here. Uh, I'm going to actually rename this now. I'm going to go F2 and we're going to call this V Firestar 2 because I've already got a fire stuff, but just for this example you can call it whatever the name of the weapon you want. Uh, I'm just going to drag it down to my main folder here. Drag it down so we've now got a prefab called uh, V Fire Stuff 2. So this way we're not actually changing the assault rifle from the original pack. We can keep that there as a template. Uh, this time we'll actually be adding its own separate um, prefab. So now that we've got that, we're going to open this up. We can see there's a renderer and there's a whole bunch of stuff here. I'm just going to shrink the renderer for now and I'm going to shove Wand 5 Purple uh, underneath renderer. So it's part of it's a child of Fire Stuff 2, but not a child of the renderer. Okay, so. Now that we've done that, uh, you can see it's going to be sitting over here when it's we need it to be sitting up where this is. So I'm just going to click on here, reset the position, and now you can see that it's sitting there. Now, 
Uh, this is where it gets tricky. So this is the pivot of my item, and if we click up here, this is also the hold point for the item. So in order to get the character holding it at the position that I want, we need to make sure that this V5 stuff too here, the hold point which is signified here, is at the position on the 3D model where we want it to line up. So I don't actually want it all the way back there because it looks like there's not much balance between here and I think if you're holding a stuff out that way it might look a little bit silly. So I'm going to move it back just a little bit. I'm going to shift the model to round about here. Uh, it gives it a little bit more room so that the elbow can sit over it and you'll see this will pop out behind his elbow when he's holding onto it. Um, now if we go back here you can see it's only really shifted at a few inches up the handle, that's fine. Uh, now we need to look at shifting the rest of the components around. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select uh, all of these, um, even the scope tagger one, and just going to drag it down so it becomes a child of 1 to 5 purple. Yeah, it's going to break the prefab, don't worry about that because we've created our own prefab. Um, I'm going to leave this here for now as a reference for when I'm shifting around some of the other components. So first we're going to go with the hitbox because that's the easiest one to see and manipulate. So we're going to move that now just so it's in line with pretty much the center point of that. And we can either edit the collider or we can actually just stretch out the component until uh, it matches pretty much where we want to go. So we can go from there. Oh, that's probably a bit too much. Shrink it down a little. And then just move it horizontally. Yeah, and that gets to the end. Um, not a big issue. This is more for an issue if you're going to be using the staff as a melee weapon as well, um, which I probably will for this. Uh, but just yeah, get it to roughly the size of the hitbox that you want for the mesh that you're using. So now that one's done. All right. So now the next we need the audio source. Now, as you can see here, the audio source was actually placed a little bit in front of where the uh, muzzle for the rifle is. So we can pretty much do the same for that. We're just going to shift it out, and because we're down a little bit lower than the muzzle, we'll just drop it down to here. Uh, the next thing is the point light, and again that one sits just in front of the muzzle, so we can bring that out just in front here, and pop it down here. I might bring it back in a little bit closer so it illuminates a bit more of the, the tip there. Um, now the particles. Now these ones are all over the place now. You've got the capsule. We don't really need the capsule for this one, so I'm actually just going to disconnect it here. Uh, now the fire, one, two, three, and four, they're pretty much, go okay, click, click. You can see they're sort of moved around in separate ways just to sort of sit around the muzzle there. Pretty much when the weapon fires, um, that will all be going off. So I'm just going to select them all and get them on the pivot. And I'm just going to move them where I can to the tip here. Um, not a big deal. you probably end up changing these if you want. I'm not going to change these for the purpose of this demo. It's going to be a bit too much work. Um, but you can change these to whatever. You can even disable them if you don't want any kind of particle effect for when you fire the weapon. Uh, now the trail, as you can see, the trail actually starts back here at the back end of the weapon, um, close where the hold point is. I'm going to move mine slightly forward because I do have much longer mesh, um, but I'm only really going to bring it down to about um, to here and then have it sit forward. And that's where the trail render is going to start when it comes out. Um, it'll be quick enough that you won't even notice it if it's not going to pop out from the middle of my um, section here. It just creates the, the effect that I want. So I'm just going to bring it there. Um, the fire glow, again that sits far out from the muzzle, so we're going to probably bring that up here again and just drop it down there. And smoke, so this will be the puff of smoke that comes out uh, from the muzzle when you fire. You might, may or may not want that for this, uh, yeah we're going to keep it in anyway, we'll just put it towards the tip of the thing there, so just gives it a little bit extra ambience. Now the muzzle itself, as you can see the muzzle as well sits uh, within the centre of the rifle here, so we're just going to bring that straight down to the level we want. And we're pretty much going to start that from, again, where we set the trail, um, uh, the trail point as well. So the trail and the muzzle is basically the start point of where the bullet flies out from. Uh, now the hitbox, we've already moved that. Now the left hand, um, this is the interesting one because this one here we're going to actually have to fiddle with in game to make sure it sits correctly. Uh, I'm not going to turn it to local, I'm going to turn it to global and I'm just going to shift it down to, I'm actually going to put it here. No, I'll put it outside of the little handle. I'm going to put it here. We'll edit this one later anyway as we're in game so we can get it to sit correctly. Uh, now the aim reference, again, that's towards the, the back. And this will be where um, the camera zooms into, I believe. So I'm just going to shift that a bit further up. I don't actually want the zoom capability. So I don't want the first person mode to be available on this staff weapon. I'll show you later how to turn that off. Um, we'll be doing that, and as well as the, the scope target uh, is a similar thing. As you can see, when we drag it through, it actually does have 
this little aiming reticule here. We don't want to have that. Um, I mean, you can keep that if you if you do like to have something like that, and you can change it to a little magical emblem or something um, as your aiming device. But I don't particularly want to use that for this, so I'm actually going to turn that off. I'll leave the camera where it is for now so that the parts do work, but um, we won't be using that later. All right, so now that we've readjusted our staff weapon, um, I'm just firstly just going to click apply here so that all of our changes get made. And as you can see down here, we've got the assault rifle mesh sitting over the um, staff mesh. We don't need the renderer mesh anymore. We can actually turn that off, so I'm just going to delete that from it. Yeah, it'll break the prefab, no worries. It's going to apply that again, and now you can see that's disappeared. And now we've got two stars here. One's purple, one's red. Um, this is the one that's already set up and working, ready to go, and this is the current one. So now, um, as I said before, the reason uh, I've set it to work as an assault rifle is because the animation for the assault rifle is already set up in a way that um, best represents holding the staff weapon. Uh, the RPG hold points are slightly different as the left hand comes across to hold onto a handle and the animation set itself just doesn't match holding the staff the way I want it held. Um, as you saw in the, uh, the earlier part of the video, it was being held down low as though it was uh, like a long sort of rocket staff. Um, in order to do that, I've actually used the uh, just a modified version. Oh, sorry, I've modified the the hold point or the default equip point for the staff weapon using the uh, assault rifle animations, and it's come up pretty well. So anyway, we don't want it to shoot as fast as an assault rifle, so we've got the shot frequency here, which is going to be the first one that we have a look at. Uh, so we want to change that. We want it to be a lot slower. In my video, I had it set to one. It was a little bit slow, so I might just put down point uh, seven five. Should be so you know every three quarters of a second we'll get another fire. Um, the clip size we don't want that to be 25. You can really pretty much set this to whatever you want. I'm going to set that down to 10. So we've got um, 10 fire blasts per clip that we have. Uh, the ammo that we want for it. I'm also just going to set that to 10. Ammo ID 13. Move set to upper body to reload ID one. Uh, we can change these a little bit later. I'm going to leave them right now as they are um, because that's already set up for uh, what I want from the assault rifle. Um, oh, did I turn that off or on? Um, yeah, we'll leave that use IK on uh, idle. So now we've got the hand IK target, left hand IK. Yeah, we're already using that, that's fine. We'll adjust that one later. Now the projectile, the projectile is gonna actually have to change and I'm gonna change that now while I can. Um, I'm just gonna use my old fireball. I'll show you how in another tutorial to make this fireball. Um, and we'll set it up to that. So we've got that uh, projectile to hide. We're not going to hide the, the fireball because we actually want it to last a little while till it hits its target and explodes. Projectile to hide delay. Well, we're not hiding anything. That's fine. Muzzle. We've already got the muzzle selected. That was the one that we've moved um, across to here. And the aim reference is the one that we've got sitting up here. Now projectiles per shot. We're going to leave it to one as it is going to be a, um, a rocket style uh, launching. So we only want one projectile to come out. You might want a some sort of blast stuff and you might be able to pump that up like a shotgun and have three or four pellets that come out in a dispersed fashion. Now the other thing we need to look at is velocity. Now the assault rifle comes out a lot faster than most of the other weapons. Uh, we don't want it to come out super fast because we won't be able to see any of the effects that we're doing and it won't look very cool. So we actually want to drag this one down. Um, I think 60 should be fine. It'll be a very slow rocket. You can adjust this um, to personal taste once you start practicing with it. Um, damage by distance, yeah, so there's actually going to be a drop off depending on um, the. Uh, sorry, depending on how long away the, the shot is. Um, I don't think that's going to be an issue because we are using the rocket ammo, it's going to be exploding and the explosion damage will be damaging um, anything around it. Now, here's your audio clips, and we've got the rifle fire. I'm just going to change that now for the um, rocket fire. I think I've actually got a bunch of fire sounds. What have we got here? Frost, frost impact, fire, fire impact. No, it's going to go with fire impact too. Change it like that. Now, an empty clip, I'm just going to leave those as standard. Choose those to whatever sounds you want to have for your thing. The point light um, is the point light that we had selected uh, already in there. And now this, this is where we're going to go here with the scope options. So I don't actually want to have a scope target or a camera. Um, I don't want the player to be able to, to zoom in um, beyond the third person aiming, so I'm actually going to set these to none. Um, which you can see if I bring this across, sorry if this hadn't already popped up before, I think I may have used it and not shown. There we go, none. Uh, and then on the camera we're also going to set down to none. 
So there we go. So now we've got none on those things. So now when we go to third person mode, it um, it won't zoom in. Uh, now the melee weapon, we can leave that as it is because it's pretty much going to be the same as it needs to be. Uh, I'm just going to click apply, and there we go. So now we've created the fire star, uh, and that's our weapon for our character. So I'm just going to delete that from the game hierarchy now. So you can see we've got our character. Now we need to uh, add that into the item list to make it available for our character. So we're going to go to the third person shooter model, we're going to scroll down to the item manager script, we're going to open item list, and I'm going to drag this up onto the window now so you can see it. Uh, so as you can see now we've got all this, it doesn't really matter which um, of the weapons you copy, so we created an assault rifle but you can actually just duplicate the RPG um, itself, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to, sorry, make sure it's, um, you can highlight or you can't highlight, you click on this little item here, duplicate item, would you like to duplicate this item? Yes. So you click on that. Now when we scroll down to the bottom, you can see we've got a clone of the RPG. I've already made it here with the original Fire stuff that I created for the demo. So I'm just going to show you what I've done here. Uh, we're going to edit the name firstly, so we're going to go Firestar2 and click OK. Now it's changed the name, so it's no longer a clone name, that's fine. Description, very destructive, well we'd want to hope so. Um, shooter, the icon, I don't have any of the extra icons that I've made here, so we're just going to leave it as the um, RPG icon for now. But what we need to change is this here, the original object, where it says VRPG. So what we want to do is we want to actually change that. So I'm going to go, yeah, we're on our assets page. I'm going to have to move this off the window. So fire stuff 2, I'm going to bring that in. Yeah, bring that back on. Okay, so as you can see, I've changed it now to fire stuff 2 on the thing. So if I click on this, it's going to bring it up. If I click on here, it's obviously going to bring up all of my prefabs. So we can actually just do it this way. Fire stuff, and there we go, fire stuff 2. So I'm going to click on that. Yeah, it's fire stuff 2. Um, collectible RPG, uh, you can change this to whatever collectible item you set up. I don't have a collectible item set up for it, so I'm just going to leave it as that because we're not going to be dropping it. I'm not going to be doing anything special like that to it. Now damage, um, 85, ammo count 1. Um, I'm actually going to set that to 10. Uh, as when I get the item, I want, to act, want it to actually have a full ammunition clip, whereas the RPG normally only has one. So we'll leave that as 10, that's fine, that's the attributes done. Now custom settings. As you can see here, I've got this one saying rocket point. Um, that's the uh, default equip point that I set up to work with the rocket launcher. Uh, I'm going to change that for this weapon. I'm actually going to call it staff point. So I'm going to go staff point and that's going to come in handy later. So equip ID 3, uh, equip delay time 5. That's um, set up for the rocket launcher. So um, the equip ID shows where uh, sorry, it tells, it tells the animator controller which animation it wants to play as the equipping animation. Um, I've set that to 3, I think it pulls it from over the shoulder or, or some sort of fancy thing. And then the equip delay time 0.5 is um, the time in seconds from when the animation starts to when the item appears in the hand of the, um, the avatar. So now that we've done that, I'm just going to close that up. And we're going to hide that now because we've already got it in our list. I'm going to go third person shooter going to scroll down and we're going to add an item, going to click on here, go to fire staff 2, add, and as you can see we've got one fire staff for the thing, I'm actually going to also um, equip now, it's actually using the rifle ammunition, because that was, the, we set it up on the rifle, um, so the in the, the weapon list on here, uh, where are we, ammo IDs 13, that's the assault rifle ammo, we can change that later on um, for the purpose of this uh, demonstration, I'm just going to leave it as it is. We're going to go add item and we want rifle ammo add and then we set in how much ammo we want to have as a spare clip. I'm just going to put in an extra 10 so this way we get 20 rounds with it to um, play around with. Now uh, as I set up before with the fire staff uh, we need to come down here to the custom handles on the right arm. So you can do it for both left arm and right arm depending on what um, items you got equipped. The left arm is usually for things like shields and maybe offhand weapons if you want them to set up at a different point from the default. So you might have two sets of shields and they might require you to be set up in two different positions to look right. So you'd set up custom handles and that allows you to um, modify the equipment point locations on your model. Uh, in order to, to make up for that sort of discrepancy. So we're going to go with New Handler, and we're going to type in Staff Point, and you see that's the name that we put on the weapon itself. We're going to go Create, and now it's created that Staff Point. So if I click on this Transform, as you can see over in the hierarchy here, it's now got a Staff Point. So I've got Default, Rocket, M4A1, and the Staff Point. Um, so now this one here, we're going to uh, modify in 
uh, in game so we can show. Now it should already actually be the same as the default equip point, but I'll just do it manually so that you can see how it's made. So we're going to go back to the overall tree. So we've got that. Um, I'm going to set it to auto equip. That's one of the new features that's come out with 2.2b is that you can actually start the game with that already equipped. So you don't have to go into your inventory and, um, and pull it out. Um, that's pretty much all we need to do for the main thing. We've got the extra point there. We've got the weapon equipped. Everything else is as is. So I'm actually going to now play the game and we're going to see how it looks when he pulls it out. So as you can see, yep, yeah, it's pretty good. He's holding on to it. Um, controller. I'll click on here, running around. So yeah, you can see he's sort of holding on to it. Um, it's going through his head and not really where we want it to sit. Now that's because of where it's equipped. If I go to this, oh, you can see it pops up not too bad. And it should have run, which is good. So they're hitting and exploding my special explosions, which I'll show you when I set up the projectile. So what we want to do now is we want to actually change the position that it's being held at. Um, I'm just going to move out to here because I know that in the scene view it can conflict with the um, UI menu. Now, in order to change the, um, the, like the equipment point, what we want is we want to come down to this script here, Shooter Manager. I'm going to click Open and we're going to bring up all of the little options that we need. We want these two here, Lock Camera, Lock Aiming. Now I'm going to click to the scene view and we are going to highlight our third person shooter, hit F so we can move that camera towards him. Now again, yeah, I've hidden the um, gizmos, the 3D icons I've turned off, you can even show grid. Yeah, I kept that unselection outline I don't also like because it gets in the way. As you can see, we've got a whole lot of stuff here. We want to try and click on the staff itself and in the hierarchy we can see here I've selected one five purple, five staff two. We want to click staff point. That's the one that we're going to edit in order to get all of our stuff aligned correctly. Um, now we want to make sure we are set on uh, pivot and I believe global before we start editing this. So as you can see now, as I move these things around, it's going to set up and move my hand in funny ways. So we want it to be able to correctly use that. Just keep rolling it around until we get to the right point. And it can be quite finicky because it, when you modify or when you roll one thing around, it rolls around in weird ways. Um, we want to bring that out. But as you can see, this is actually using the assault rifle um, animation. So uh, it will be a lot different to the original assault rifle aim. Um, as you can see now, he's holding onto it like that. That looks fairly good. Uh, if we have a look here. See, if we were to zoom in, it would be on a slight angle. So we want to try and make that as flat as possible. So level. Level it out nicely, and you can see there the hand pretty much fits where it would go. Obviously the left hand IK point is a bit off, but we'll deal with that a little bit later. Okay, so sorry for that little jump cut there, but I had to get uh, interrupted and sort out some stuff. So as you can see here, I'm, uh, I've actually used the point that I worked on a little bit earlier to just try and um, fix up exactly where the things were. Um, still could use a little bit of work we can always drop it down and actually move the object itself to global um, want to try and adjust some of that just so it looks a little bit more natural but as you can see that's pretty good where it is um, at least I'm happy with it now as I was talking about earlier um, uh, with the pivot point for the weapon itself uh, I might actually move that one just back out a little bit so Local, and I'm just going to move it back. So there's a little bit more of overhang from here, it just looks a little bit more natural. Uh, when we come into the site here, we can see that it is fairly much aligned with the camera, um, so that'll be nice and straight. So once we've got that, what we need to do is we need to select the transform, we need to copy the component. So this will copy all of the little bits and pieces that we need in the position, rotation, and scale format. And we're going to stop the gameplay so that we actually edit the item outside of the um, preview. And we're going to go paste component values. Now that's going to paste the values that we just had just a minute ago. So now when we start again, let's pull up my controller here. You can see now it's actually sitting in our hand a little bit better than before. Um, could use a little bit of work, but I think for now that's pretty much where it needs to be. 
So you can see there that, that works fine. Now the next thing we want to do is we want to actually change this thing so that his left hand is on the um, the staff correctly. So we're going to do the same thing again. We're going to go third person shooter, uh, shooter manager. We're going to do lock camera, lock aiming, and then we're going to switch to the scene mode. We're going to find our staff, which is here. Oh, we've already got it on the hierarchy, so we're just going to choose staff point. But this time we're actually going to go to the staff itself. We're going to find the left hand IK. Oops, seemed a little bit too much. Now we're going to rotate to where we feel it should sit. Uh, probably have to sit down like that. Might get a better angle here. And we'll just move this until we get it to a point that we're happy with. So about there should be fine. Um, as you can see, it looks like it's sitting all right there. I might want that the finger curl um, wrap around to sit a little bit better. So we'll set it up like that. Just move it a little bit further. So yeah, that looks like he's holding it pretty much the way that I want him to hold it. So we're happy with that. Now we need to do the same thing. We're going to make sure we've got the left hand IK selected. We're going to copy component uh, and now we're going to take it out of the preview mode and we're going to bring fire stuff too was the one that we're playing with. I'm going to bring that back in and we're going to bring it down here. Left hand IK, you can see selected here and paste component values. Now, um, so once we've done that, that's in the start, but we need to actually affect what's down here. Now, we can't do it from here, because as you can see, when I select that, it's not going to allow me to do anything with the stuff inside. So we go back here, all we do is we just find this button up here saying apply, click that, and now it's applied to that stuff whenever it's been dragged into the scene. So we can delete that now, that's fine. And now when we press play, you'll see we've got staff is equipped and you can see he's holding it rather well. Um, I wouldn't mind actually moving that lower hand again, so I might adjust that, but for now it looks fine. And when he's got it here, he basically brings it up and left it. There we go, we have our fire. Now of course the reload animation is the same for the M4. Um, we can change that a little bit later on. I don't really have uh, an animation at the moment that I like for um, <laughs> rearming a staff. I'd like maybe like a little mage spell thing to play and uh, activate uh, some sort of particle effect on the staff itself to make it glow as though it's regenerating the magic. Um, I can do that at a later date. But for now, this is how you make a fire staff. Alright, thanks for watching. Um, the next tutorial I'll show you how to actually do the explosive spell. Thank you.